and a warm welcome to our service of choral evensong here at St Peter's. Warm welcome if you're sitting in the congregation or joining us on the live stream. We stand to sing our opening hymn, hymn number 296, omitting verses 6 and 7, For All the Saints. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and the whole company of heaven to offer unto him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We follow too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. 
You have done those things which you ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Fear thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life for the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of the Holy Ghost. Amen. O oh Lord, open now our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Remain standing to sing Psalm. 111, which in the green book is on page 272.
The reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound uncurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you are to what is precious, and not of what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the first reading. The second lesson is taken from Hebrews chapter 11. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched ranging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, 
won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not without us be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his, set, his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God. be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father,
Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the King. Endure thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. God, make clean our hearts within us. Almighty God, who showest to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may eschew those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things that are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God of hosts, who so kindled the flame of love in the heart of your servant George that he bore witness to the risen Lord by his life and by his death, give us the same faith and power of love that we who rejoice in his triumphs may come to share with him the fullness of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we being defended from the fear of our enemies may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence, open the mind of God to us that in your light we may see light and in your strength be strong. Amen. About 18 years ago, I found myself embroiled in a scandal. Part of my job required me to assess people for vocational qualifications in care, but my suspicions had been aroused that cheating was taking place on a large scale. Now, it took three years to expose it, but fraud was confirmed when a box of material was found which enabled some candidates to pass the rewards quicker than others. But there was a price to be paid for being outspoken about it. I was accused of being on a crusade against the local assessment centre who submitted candidates' work for national validation. Some of my colleagues didn't want to be seen siding with me lest their own management careers might be in jeopardy, and my line manager had also expressed his doubts and questioned my motives. That is, until someone had been brave enough to walk through my door and recount what they had been told about how the awards were being achieved illicitly in record time. It's all water under the bridge now, as they say, but that feeling of standing alone and almost being disowned for speaking the truth is not a pleasant experience. In our Bible reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, that is exactly what is happening. He has been commissioned by God to be a prophet and speak his word to the people. Initially, he experiences joy. Your words were found and I ate them. And your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. But in time, he finds that uh, being a prophet isn't all it's cracked up to be. By speaking out, it's only bringing him suffering and is putting him at loggerheads with his own people. He's feeling isolated as an outsider, being shunned by his people, and he cries out to God, why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? He feels aggrieved that he's telling the people, his people, God's message, but they treat him with contempt. It's difficult making a principled stand about anything Martin Luther King Jr. also knew that experience, writing from a Birmingham jail after being locked up for making a stand against segregation. He too could not understand why he was standing alone when other Christians and their ministers remained silent behind stained glass windows. Jeremiah acutely felt the sense of abandonment too. So he asked God to bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. He wanted justice. He couldn't understand why he too was experiencing suffering when it should have been the people around him who were experiencing suffering for turning their backs on God. Feeling aggrieved at what he feels is an, is an injustice that is being done to him, he turns his anger on God. You are to me like a deceitful brook like waters that fail. Reminds us a little of the story of Job, where he can take no more suffering and demands of God, how long will you torment me? Are you not ashamed to wrong me? At Easter, we're all too familiar with the psalmist's cry, which Jesus spoke in the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Instead, Jeremiah compares God to a river or a lake that dries up in the heat, just when the traveler needs it most when he is overcome by it. But just as in the story of Job, God's response to Jeremiah is not quite what is expected either. He doesn't tell Jeremiah that he's had a raw deal. No, he instead, he tells him, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. There are various suggestions of what's meant by this. Some biblical commentators suggest that it means Jeremiah had been watering down God's message to make it more palatable to the people. Others suggest that God is in fact challenging Jeremiah to rise up to the challenge of the message he has been proclaiming to the people on God's behalf. Or as we might say, God is in fact saying to him, Preacher, 
practice what you preach. I think perhaps that's a message for us all in the church today. As a church, we profess to be welcoming to all, for God's love is limitless. All that the Father gives me will come to me, says Jesus in the Gospel of John. Yet as the Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann observes, our several orthodoxies of nationalism, racism, sexism, and gender exclusion all have imagined a God who could be safely kept in our preferred boundaries. But as he says, the God of the gospel will not be so contained. Making a principled stand and practicing what you preach is indeed a difficult thing to do. God tells Jeremiah, they will fight against you. He's not been promised an easy life, but he has been told if he is true to God's word, they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. So the question for us all as Christians tonight, as a welcoming church, are we willing to practice what we preach? Amen. Please stand as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 580, Judge Eternal Throned in Splendor. Let us pray. Almighty God of infinite compassion, who has called us to bear one another's burdens, hear us in your mercy as we pray for others. We pray for this, our church, the church of your dear Son, where it is corrupt, purify it, where it is broken, Join it together that it may be a more effective witness to your grace and a better instrument of your will. We pray for this, our country. We pray for your servant, our King, and for all who are in authority, that they may govern us according to the laws of this kingdom, which have no end. We ask that you pour out your blessing upon all who are dear to us, wherever they may be, Make us one in heart in all separation. God of all comfort, we ask that you have pity on those who are sick. We pray for those in our parish who are sick. We pray for especially for Alistair, for Carol, for David, for Joyce, Malcolm, Peter, Simon, Susan, and Trevor. We ask that you restore them in body, soul, and mind. Let your light be in every darkened room and in every shadowed life. We ask that you soothe the pillow of suffering and let your mercy uplift all who are going through the dark into the light of your eternal presence. We remember the recently departed. 
We remember Ralph Osborne, Brian Andrews, and Damien Lloyd. We also remember those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, especially Sam Shields. Finally, we thank you for those near and dear whom you have called to yourself. Give us grace to cherish the hope that when the day breaks and the shadows flee away, we shall meet them again in your presence, for there is fullness of joy. These prayers we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand for our closing hymn, hymn number 780, Soldiers of Christ Arise. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>